One of the things that I found at Market is everything American. And I don't know if it's because of the Olympics or if it's because of an election year, and we actually talked about this a lot with the other two designers and I, um, but there definitely seems to be this kind of go USA team here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, these are American hook drugs. American hook drugs were made in the 1830s, and they originally made, were made out of scraps of old fabrics or yarns or threads, and they've really bumped up the quality of them by using really consistent materials, and they've also recolored them. This is a very traditional pattern for a hooked rug, and then this is an example of a much more contemporary pattern, also done in a hooked rug. And yet more things, all American crafts, were in another showroom, and they have other things that are from the American industry and American crafts. These are spools, which would have been used in the textile industry here in the United States, and they have balls of twilled yarn, and these actually are what would have been used to make the hooked drugs we saw in the other showroom. I, I would love to be able to take credit for finding this piece, but I have to give credit where credit is due. We were walking by the window and Philip Gorbin saw this, and honestly, it's not something I would have looked at. I would have walked right past it, but then Philip brought us in here, got us to really look at it, and I have to say, it became the all-time showstopper for all three of us. This is a fantastic example of craft. This is just such a beautifully painted cabinet. And the other thing that's really great about this that we did see examples of is this is a 19th century cabinet which has been recently painted, so it's kind of a reuse of old material. And we just, we all fell in love with it. The last piece about American crafts that I want to talk about is good old Moby Dick. Um, typically these were made out of found pieces of driftwood and they were carved um, in beach communities like Nantucket. Uh, Cape Cod and Maine and being a good old Yankee boy myself I grew up with these and have a particular affection for these Growing up my father was in the textile industry, so I kind of have this Passion or obsession for textiles and rugs. So this place was like mecca to me um, What's really interesting about the market that I've seen is they've taken very traditional fabrics and patterns from fabrics and rugs and recolored them for the American market and made them more palatable or kind of more hip and more fashion forward. These are ecots, which they've recolored and made in silks. These are actually based on Suzani patterns. Um, and then here's a more traditional pattern. But you can see the colors are completely new, completely different, um, much more fashion forward. Another pattern or technique that actually dates back to Renaissance Europe is flame stitching or a chevron pattern. And here it's colored in a red, white, and blue, which is very different from what originally would have been used. A trend that I found here in Las Vegas was super high-end materials that have been used for centuries, used in a different way and much more economically so that they're affordable to market. In um, Mughal, India, in Rajasthan, the Mughal princes built these massive, massive palaces, and they would take little tiny pieces of convex mirror, and they would push it into their plaster walls. So you would have these huge rooms just covered with these convex mirrors. And here at Made Goods, they're making panels of it, and then they're also making other things with it. They're making tabletops with it. And the great thing about Made Goods is they'll do custom. So you literally could do panels that covered an entire room. Another thing that I found here that I thought was really great is Tsarist Russia. Tsarist Russia, they would take malachite, which is a semi-precious material found in Russia, and they would make amazing tables. And these tables now at market are hundreds of thousands of dollars. And these guys are taking malachite and they're doing mirror frames and they're doing these little platters and just really great things that are affordable. Another material that I've seen used several times here at the show is um, something called aiguamise. Aiguamise is either painting or silver and gold leaf on the back of a mirror. Now, this technique is particularly high end because in the 18th and 19th century, it was used in palaces and really, really grand houses. And then in the 20s and the 40s of the 20th century, it was used by French manufacturers such as Jensen for very, very site-specific, super high end furniture. Um, and here it is on an incredibly affordable piece of furniture, and I think it looks really great. Now, although this isn't a very high-end material that's being used really creatively, uh, this I flipped out over. I thought this was amazing. 
This is just a piece of wood. They burn the piece of wood, and then while the wood's still hot, they encase it in resin, so that the resin does all of this kind of crackling and bubbling, and you get this beautiful lamp, which I think retails for like $400, which is insane. Mm. So I loved, and I hope that you guys will take a little cue from this, I love how you see things through the other's eyes and get excited about something that you, could, you walked right past that chest. And then Phil was like, wait a minute, this is kind of great, because it wasn't in your sort of design lexicon of what you normally see. And then once you kind of isolated and you were all looking at it, it became your fave. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. That, that was the right. market favorite. Yeah, well, and that's the Easily. power of traveling. It was. In, together, which in we never yeah. have the luxury to do. So when you yeah, yeah. go to market today, if you can bring a friend, even if they have the exact opposite taste, sometimes that, that yin yang of eyes is really important because your instinct, I think we tend to edit ourselves, right? Like, oh, that's not for me. It's, but, it's right. not what I do. And the other thing is, like, don't bring a friend. Bring somebody who owns the store down the street from you that ordinarily you think is competition and see what they're looking at. And because you're not in competition, you're, you're going to have a different take on it. You're going to use it in a mm -hmm. different way. A friend of me. A friend of me? A friend of me. Bring a friend of me. <laughs> it's bring a friend of me, Dave. <laughs> In Las Vegas, yeah. Um, I loved, if we talk about the American crafts, I love how you, you said about the rugs. Well, those rugs were insane. They were great. The first one when you said that um, it was a traditional hook pattern, but it was kind of blown out. It was sort of bigger than usual. And then the other ones, the chevron, that had those crazy colors, but it was based on traditional. I thought yeah. that was so interesting. Yeah, yeah. And also, like, you saw the hand in a lot of stuff. You saw the hand in so much of the stuff. And even with the semi-precious materials, same thing. Like, there's another trend. Mm -hmm. Instead of things being machine-made, you kept seeing how mm -hmm. it was made, who touched it. That was really interesting. And also, you know, with the rugs, they're not just recoloring them. They're bleaching them. They're over dyeing they're over them. Dying they're them. stripping them. They're, they're super are, bright and yeah. really, I mean, right. this is the first thing we went to. We had to go look. I them. thought rugs. That, that, that's that was an exciting category here. Yeah, yeah so there rugs, are a lot of rugs. Were really yeah. good here. It would be easy to be a little scared about some of those rugs, like to somebody not the one that was that super color, the red and yellow and the black, the first one that we saw. How would you use that yeah, in a I'm room? How would you using really quiet furniture with it? I mean, it, modern. Clean. See, I would actually bump it up. It. I would, I would bump you it up. You would balance it with. I mean, you would bump it up. I would else. do like high go over the top. dark walls right. with that really intense rug right. and just make this crazy intense room. Well, there you go. So two yeah. different right. ways right. of looking at it. Um, each would work. So either quiet it out or bump it up. Bump it up. More is more. More is more. <laughs> and then more is even better. And, um, and I, again, we, we've just talked about it, but the exotic materials, seeing the hand in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I don't think, um, you know, we went through a time of sort of the organic materials and the raw materials, which was very refreshing a couple of years ago. And now to go a step further and see a manipulation of materials through a craxman's yeah. talent well, is it exciting. Adds, it's also exciting. It adds yeah. texture, it adds like yeah. another layer. And personality. Absolutely. Yeah. It's also exciting to walk around and not just see furniture that's so pared down but embellished in uh, different ways. You're right. We just I, I, hope, I think that's a trend. And embellished, you yeah. mean by what? Just like embellished, by the... whether it's with shells or with malachite or whatever. We saw a lot of animals uh -huh. yeah. also. Uh, but you know, things that are decorated. We just nicely. did a, um, in, the, in New York, I just did a, a powder room for somebody. In the entire room, we did custom Eglamise walls and the ceiling, and it cost tens of thousands of dollars. And to walk into these showrooms and to see Eglamise being used on furniture that's two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. That's so. Kind those of things were still at a very good price point, even the exotic yeah, materials. Yeah, yeah, no, it's all still incredibly yeah. reasonable, incredibly affordable. Yeah, we were surprised. And kind of an obsession of mine. Years ago, about twelve years ago, I went all through Rajasthan, India, and those convex mirrors pushed into yeah, plastic those were have been in my head for twelve really? years. And I walked into Made Goods, and they're doing it. I was like, oh my god, I've been looking for somebody mm -hmm. to do this. And they'll do it custom. Oh. So that was amazing. Who's going to be great. next? Who's going to use those next? I don't Here know. Somebody's getting them somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, um, and even w when you talked about that kind of Americana thing uh, is not really for me, but the Nantucket whale, which I love. We're both going there in a couple weeks. We're right. excited. And that whale, that Nantucket whale, is such an icon, that preppy Americana icon. But I loved how it looked slightly different. It didn't look like the typical one that you see. It almost looked um, 
morphed a little bit, like slightly abstract. Abstract is yeah. the word yeah. I'm looking for. It's exactly. Also the material, like uh, you know, ordinarily I look at something and I say it's not made out of what it's supposed to be made out of, and it bothers me. And the fact that that was made out of this plaster instead of real carved wood, I thought it was cool. I thought it was interesting. And just I have to say that lamp that burned wood. Yeah, that was like cool. The, again, my obsession is with technique. Uh -huh. And the technique of that was fantastic. And again, and it didn't that. make it unaffordable yeah. just because it was that. It was cheap. It wasn't affordable. It was really reasonable. It's a lot of look, which is yeah. nice. Yeah. That's, a good, that's a good phrase, a lot of look. And I liked how you said about um, it's OK for things to look decorated. I think we almost got away from the decorated look for a while where it was like the bad word, like this looks too decorated. We have to pare everything down. But then, of course, maybe everything got a little bit boring. So to weave in personality and technique right. and decoration. Yeah, and well, the, the, pa the painted furniture looked fresh again. Mm -hmm. Yes, you Come were saying that, circle. the painted furniture. Not shabby chic kind of right. thing. Right, no, it, it's new again, mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. and we, we all liked it. We all responded to the it. The painted cabinet. Philip well, saw it. Really we were sweet. walking down the hall with Philip saw it. You kind of poo pooed like, oh, it, actually. You, you what? Do you remember? You kind of poo pooed it. I totally yeah. poo pooed it. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, I'm not doing painted furniture. <laughs> and then we walked yeah. in there, and I was like, this is fantastic. Yeah. It's so beautifully done. Yeah. And that was one of the more expensive items that we saw. But it, it was beautiful. But also, they, they said that they could, uh, they could take any design. Any no, piece of furniture. They do any piece of furniture, custom. any design. Okay, so that's another thing I want. You send them a design, and they, so that's another thing amazing finding a resource like that. So it's the customization, custom. you guys are, expensive. so yeah. you guys have brought that up a little bit. There's been a couple of pieces. So if you guys see something that you love and you don't just assume that that's the way it is, that there are possibilities. That, more and more so, yeah. vendors so that's told how us that. Used to that was how they greeted us. They right? said, you know, we do yeah. it all custom. Really? All custom. So, yeah. yeah. So the fact that you can, I just always just assume that you have to go to fancy workrooms to have, to have customization, done in a but custom you don't. way. But I was pleasantly surprised, as we all were, that you could go into a place well, like Made Goods. Well, everyone in the industry is more flexible now, yeah. so that's one yeah, of the advantages of So that. were they Within saying customization sure. with size and material and uh, color, everything? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so good to know, right? Today, when you go there, don't be afraid to say, I love this, but I'm just wondering, can you do this? Because you're saying mm -hmm. design industry has to be, they want to be more flexible. They, they would love your business at they least. Sell. Right. They want to they sell. They want to sell. And they don't want to be so rigid with trends. Mm -hmm. They want you to say, this is what I sell. This is what works for me. Yeah. And in some ways, you could replace the word trends that we're talking about here today with just what excited you. And I think that's like the most important element in design and when you go to a market is be excited. Get out there. Excite your eye. Inspire yourself. And uh, don't pre-edit too much, because even the pros you know, you learn. It's fun because you guys have never been here before, so you were really starting from no, scratch. And it, it was really about keeping an open mind and just yeah. seeing what our gut reactions were to things. And 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 we'd have these reactions, and we'd take the picture, and we'd come back, and then we'd figure it out. Right. Yeah. This was all about. This picture wall was all about. It was like an editorial meeting. It was all about connecting the dots. We had. We probably had dozens more pictures. We did. That we, we didn't we, even we, yeah. we got rid of a lot. And just to in in wrapping it up before we go to Q and A. Kudos to you guys, because these guys hit the ground running from the airport, came here, went to the whole show, had to pick film, and then filming. That, it wasn't like it took you six months to do that. You guys were amazing. And I'm, I'm, I'm feeling <laughs> no like sweet. the excitement of the market and what you found really helped guide you in your words, because it you it seemed easy. it made it easy. Well, I made two new friends. And they, yeah, that I was know. Good yeah. Love That's Love one of the best now. things about. We're not um, frenemies either. No, we're not. And you're not we're frenemies, exactly. Yeah.